Hello, thank you for joining us for part two now of Resting in Christ, the Sabbath School Lesson Sermon Series, where we're taking scriptures from the day and preaching a sermon to bring more people to the love, the peace, the rest in Jesus Christ. Before we begin, uh, grab our Bibles, and we are going to focus on Matthew eleven thirty-eight and uh and just rest twenty-eight. And this and this is and this is a beautiful verse for all of us, a promise. Before we open up the Bible, let's put our hands together and let's pray that God will guide us. Father in heaven, thank you so much for everything. And Father, I pray that we can learn to rest in you, to give you our everything, our lives surrendered at the altar so that you can use us as your sacrifice. You can live through us and bless us. Be with us as we study. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So we are studying this quarter about rest and what it means to truly rest in Jesus. And if we open our Bibles and we go to Matthew eleven twenty-eight, 28, come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. This is such a beautiful promise because God is looking to give us rest for our souls. And God has given us rest for our souls. Let's look at this. I have a presentation I want to share. And this is a blessing because then we could look at the scriptures together. Let's see. Share. Okay. Amen. So this is part two. Christ's invitation. This is Jesus giving us all an invitation now to come and get rest in him. What a blessing. Come on to me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. So are you worn and weary? Because if you look at this life, what this life does to us, it beats us down. It makes us worn. It makes us weary. And this is where we have to find our rest in Christ, where he can give us that peace that passes all understanding. You see, Genesis 2, 1 to 3, thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all of the host of them. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he made. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because in it, he had rested from all his work, which God created and made. And this is significant because God was giving us a Sabbath to rest with him. Why? Because he knew that we would be this busy. He knew that we would be overtaken by work. And what a blessing it is to have a memorial, a celebration with God, where we can go back and rest and get rest for our souls. This is the wisdom of God. So God gave us Sabbath as a reminder and celebration of his creative works and his majesty. But as we look through the Bible, that's not the only rest God is telling us. God is showing us so many different types of rest. Mark 6, 31, and he said unto them, Come ye yourselves apart into a desert place and rest a while. For there were many coming and going, and they had no leisure so much as to eat. And this is what we see from the word of God. We know that we get so busy. We know that we put so much time and energy in to things that we're doing. that sometimes we don't even have rest. Psalms 4, 8. I will both lay me down in peace and sleep for thou, Lord, O makest me dwell in safety. So this is the psalmist now crying out for that rest, looking for that rest that he knows that he can receive in Jesus Christ. Now, Exodus 23, 12, six days thou shalt do thy work and do, and on the seventh day thou shalt rest, that thine ox and thine ass may rest, and the son of thy handmaid and the stranger may be refreshed. So we're seeing all these different types of rest and, and what it means to truly get rest. You have the Sabbath rest. You have the rest that you need from work. You have the rest that you rest in Jesus. And then you see this command to rest. And in Deuteronomy 5, 14, but the seventh day is the Sabbath day of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy ox, nor thy ass, nor any of the cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates, that thy manservant and thy maidservant may rest as well as thou. So this is a command to rest. God knew that we needed rest. So he would give us this Sabbath day to rest so that we could focus on him. But also, even in our regular lives, there's going to be times when we yearn for that rest that we only could find in Christ. Now, this is where Jesus says, come on to me. Come on to me, all ye that 
labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. This is that promise that God has given us. Are you, are, have you been so busy lately? Have you been having so much things on your plate? Is there time where you need to just walk in nature, spend time with God? I know I have. I know I needed to go to Cleburne State Park the other day and just walk through nature and just spend time with God, praying, reading my Bible, thanking Jesus for all he has done for my life. And this is where Jesus invites you. Come, rest in me, enjoy me, get my peace. The peace that I give you is a peace that the world can't give you. So this is where we choose to make the decision to say, Lord, I will rest in you. And that is our victory, resting in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Because he gives us rest through salvation. He gives us rest through all aspects of our life. So are you going to accept this invitation? Because when we look at it, are you worn and weary? Come on to me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. This... um. This word for rest in the Greek, it's interesting because this is anapau, and this is to rest, to refresh, to take a rest, to give rest, to take ease. And this is what God, this is what Jesus is inviting us, anapau. This is Jesus saying, rest, come on to me and rest, get your rest. Jesus has given us peace from any movement or labor in order to recover and collect our strength. Jesus gives us true rest, refreshes us to give one self rest to take rest to keep quiet of the calm and the patient expectation this is where we come to jesus and lay all of our burdens aside and jesus is inviting us to take the load from us that we may enjoy the rest that he gives us you see adam clark bible commentary says the metaphor here appears to be taken from a man who has a great load laid upon him which he must carry to a certain place every step he takes reduces his strength and renders his load more oppressive. However, it must be carried on, and he labors, uses his utmost exhortations to reach the place where it is to be laid down. But this is where Jesus watches us from afar. See, Jesus, Jesus is watching us in our lives. He knows everything we have on our plate. He knows everything that we're going through. And now he comes to us in our lives and invites us, join me in rest. Join me in rest. Rest in me. Take a rest. And He's taking our load off of us and allowing us to rest in him, spending time with him in his word, praying, fasting, taking it easy. Why? Because the peace of Jesus is filling our lives. What a beautiful invitation this is for all of us to rest in Christ. You see, when we truly understand this, this concept of rest, Jesus was speaking to his disciples at the time, and he's inviting his disciples to experience the true definition of ministry and walking with him, not being bound up in self-righteous, heavy burdens like the Pharisees and laboring for their salvation. By their perspective and, and obser ob observance, where they're, they're looking and their observance, their observance of the law, and, 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 and he's not looking for that. He's saying, rest in me, rest in me. This is how you make yourself pleasing to God, by resting in me. Christ is inviting us to take up his yoke and walk in his ways, walk in his ways. Christ is inviting us who may be burdened by sin. Sin has overtaken our lives, weary, heavy laden from iniquity and inviting us to come to him and receive forgiveness and peace. What a beautiful rest that is. One of the greatest rests that we could take when it comes to Jesus, one of the greatest rests that we could take is the rest of forgiveness. When we go to Jesus with our sins, with the things that we're going through, imagine the fact that we go to Jesus and 1 John 1, 9 says, "He is if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So imagine the rest that we receive when we go to God with our sins and to know that we leave forgiven where he takes off our filthy rags and he puts on our robes of right, his robes of righteousness on us, Christ our righteousness, to a point where when God looks at us, he doesn't see our credit history, our lives and all that we've done, our sin history, but he sees Christ's life. And it's as if we never sinned before. What a blessing that is, the righteousness that we find in Christ, the rest that we find in Christ. This is victory. This is the gospel. This is the gospel. So 
when you think about the blessings that we have in Christ, this is where we find our true forgiveness. This is where we find our true peace. Anapau, Jesus is inviting us to take the load from us that we may enjoy the rest that he has. Rest from what? The temptations of the carnal mind. Every day, the mind, the mind is attacking. But you know, we need rest from that, that daily battle that people have to fight with in, within themselves. You see, me and my cousin, we were just having a conversation about this where we, there's no need for any of us to attack anybody. Me and my cousin were just having this conversation. There's no need for any of us to attack anybody or to point fingers and say, you're doing this wrong, you're doing... Because many times, the carnal mind is attacking itself. You see people participating in certain things, doing certain things, living their lifestyle a certain way. It's because that's their, their route that they chose. And many times, we may think that they don't know what they're doing, or they are, or, but we don't know what they're struggling with. We don't know what they're going through. And this is what Jesus invites them of rest to, to say, come to me, rest in me, rest in me. You see... When we look at the fact that people are bogged down by temptation, they're bogged down by many of these problems, we, we see like this rest that Jesus is talking about is rest from that fight, that war, that they may claim victory in the blood of Christ, the powerful blood that cleanses it from all unrighteousness and purify them from all sin, all powerful and powerfully gives us victory in every temptation. So they shall find rest, uninterrupted rest in Jesus Christ. All are invited to come. All. That's what's so beautiful about Jesus. And all are promised rest. If you find rest from sin and vile affections, it is because few come to Christ to receive it. This is where we have to come to Christ to receive this rest. Christ invites us to come to him, to believe in him, and to trust him. And him only for what? Our salvation. So this is where we have to look at this scripture and understand what Jesus is really saying. Come to me and all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke. Take my yoke. This is the beautiful thing about Jesus. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. What a beauty this is. What a beauty this is. You know, we have to truly understand that Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ is our victory. And Jesus Christ is inviting us to say, what are you going through right now? What is boggling down your life? Come to me, bring that to me, bring that to the cross. And you know what's so beautiful about Jesus that when we bring him our struggles, when we bring him our problems, when we bring him our situations, he brings us blessings, he brings us wisdom, he brings us clarity. See, God is a God of order. So many times that we see confusion in our lives, stress in our lives, all these things happen in our lives, it's because we haven't rested in God. Coming to God, asking God for forgiveness, asking God for peace, asking God for mercy, asking God to cleanse us of all unrighteousness in our lives. So I don't know if you have accepted Jesus Christ yet as your Lord and Savior. But I want to invite you right now to accept the, the salvation through Jesus Christ, that first rest, the rest of knowing that eternal life is our gift because God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. So this is the first blessing of accepting Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. We know we have life eternally. Number two, what about the sins in our life? Are we living in guilt? Are we living in pain? Are we living in anxiety? Are we living in worry? This is where we come to Jesus and he cleanses us of everything in our lives. What about our busy schedules? What about the bills? What about all these things, having to pay for school, having to graduate? This is where we come to Jesus and I'm preaching to myself right now and giving Jesus our all in all, our everything, laying it at Jesus' feet and saying, your will, your bill, <laughs> amen? Brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is our rest. I don't know if you've been resting in Jesus lately, but let's pray that God will bless us and give us the true rest in Jesus Christ. Father in heaven, I ask that you forgive us of our sins, cleanse us of all unrighteousness, but most of all, keep us faithful so that we can rest in you, we can love you, 
we can walk with you and we can accept the invitation that Jesus Christ gives us to rest in him, to have peace in him, and to walk with him. Jesus, come soon. We can't wait to see you face to face and to spend eternity with you in heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you all. Your victory is in the rest you have in Jesus Christ. God bless you.